Hello lovelies, I'm Christina and today I'm giving you my belated July wrap up. So for the month of July I listened to one audiobook and I read one, two, three, four, five, six novels, one poetry collection, and one graphic novel. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? The first book I finished in the month of July was The Light We Lost by Jill Santopolo. This is the story of Lucy and Gabe. They meet on 11th of September 2001. They have their first kiss as the city is burning in the background and it is the story of how they are torn apart from each other and thrown back into each other's lives over the next a couple of decades. I was going into this thinking it was just going to be a really easy fluffy read but it actually had a bit more depth to it than that. I really did enjoy it. It reminded me a bit of um what's it called? Oh gosh should know this. <laughs> me Before You. <laughs> it reminded me a bit of Me Before You, but it has nothing to do with the exact same premise at all. But yes, that's all I'm going to say about that, really. Really interesting book. I really liked the characters. It was not as fluffy and cheesy as I thought it would be, but quite an enjoyable read. And I ended up giving it four stars. The next book I read was a Stephen King novel, and that was Lisey's Story. Lisey's Story is the story about Lisey. Wow, that was a lot of Lisey and story in the same sentence, but <laughs> okay. Um, Lisey's husband is a well-known novelist that passes away. Over the years, he told his wife, Lisey, about the dark place that he goes to uh, whenever he writes, and a lot when he was a kid as well to escape from the dramatic childhood that he had. It is a story about how Lisey enters into this dark, mysterious place and it was really, really interesting. For this, as for so many other Stephen King novels, as much as it has paranormal elements to it, it really is more about the story about people and how cruel people can be, especially when it comes to manipulation in this one and physical abuse. So it was really a dark but interesting story and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. Still not one of my favorite Stephen King novels, but really good. The next book that I read was Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the second book in the Themis File series. The first book starts off with a, a little girl falling into a hole in the ground. They find her lying on top of a giant metal hand. Years later, when she's all grown up, she's one of the scientists on the team that works on trying to figure out why these giant metal parts are popping up all over the world. I really, really loved the first book in this series. The second one wasn't as good as the first one, but still very, very good. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where this series is going in the next book. I'm not sure when the third one will come out yet. I ended up giving it four stars. The next book that I read was one that was highly anticipated and I have a separate review for it as well so you can go check that out if you want to and that is All That She Can See by Carrie Hope Fletcher. This is a story about Cherry. Cherry can see things that other people can't and she has this um, sort of magical ability to bake things into her cake that makes anyone who eats it feel better. She runs a local bakery and then she uh, packs it up and moves away to try to help a different town by baking her cakes and making them feel better. One of the places that she goes to, she meets a guy and she's not the only one who can see what other people can't, but their abilities are still quite different. It is a story about feelings and how troublesome and difficult feelings can be, not just to cope with, but actually seeing for what they are. And I thought it was Truly tremendous, wonderful story. I love Carrie Hope Fletcher's writing style and I just think she's getting better and better for each book. Can't wait for the next one. Hopefully she'll cook up something new pretty soon. Truly, truly wonderful book and I ended up giving it five stars. Next up we have the books that I read for the Booktubeathon and I have a separate wrap-up video for that. So if you've seen that wrap-up this will probably be me repeating myself a bit. So 
Sorry, but we're just gonna do it anyways. <laughs> The first book that I read for the booktube -thon was The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett, the second book in the Discworld series. The Discworld series is really... The, I don't really know how to explain it even. It's a weird series, but I am enjoying it. I really enjoyed uh, The Color of Magic, the first book. Uh, this didn't quite make it for me. I don't know what it was. It was just maybe a bit too quirky and weird for me, but it was fun to actually get back into this world. The premise of the world is that they live on a disc that sits on top of a giant turtle and they have never had a tourist there before. And then this guy, Two Flower, appears as the first tourist to come to Discworld and it is the story of what happens to him. So you don't really have to read these in a chronological order. There is, a, I found this map thingy. I can, if I find it, I will link it in here. So you can like jump and follow different characters all around. But I'm thinking I want to continue on and probably do it chronologically. Uh, I think so, but we'll see. But yeah, didn't enjoy this one as much as the first one, but definitely will continue on. I ended up giving this three stars. The next book that I finished was an audiobook that I listened to on my Audible app, and that was The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. So Harry August has this ability that makes him be reborn every time he dies. As he gets reborn, he remembers everything from his past lives. And it is a story of the people that he meets and everything that the society of other people that has the same ability goes through. It was very interesting. It has some really great reviews on booktube and on goodreads as well it didn't quite make it up there for me i'm not sure why even though i thought the premise was really really interesting and i thought the book was quite well executed as well there was something about it that just didn't capture me still enjoyable book and one that i would recommend if you're looking for something different for sure i ended up giving it four stars next up is the highlight of july one book that's going to be my favorite for years and years to come for sure and that is Milk and Honey by Ruby Cara. I know I'm late to the party here. This, it's not like this is a new thing and I'm, I've been seeing it going around for months and I've been meaning to pick it up for a long time but haven't before now. I've been missing out. I know but now I've read it. See I've even marked up the pages for all of my favorites. Oh. I cried so much in this book. <laughs> it's horrendous. It is truly wonderful and it is really just beautifully written poems about abuse and love and how to cope with heartbreak and the healing of the body and the soul after lost love. Oh, it is so beautiful. Highlight of the month. One of my absolute favorite books of the year so far. Of course, I gave it five stars. Next up is a graphic novel, and that is Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takada. This is a really dark, steampunk-ish uh, graphic novel about a young woman who is suffering trauma after a big war, and she has this weird psychic link to a big and very powerful monster that lives inside of her. Truly fantastic, really enjoyed it. It's dark and horrific and wonderful all at the same time, just the way I like it. I am very, very excited to see where this goes and hopefully it will just get better and better. I ended up giving it four stars. Now the last book that I read in the month of July was Random by Alma Alexander. This is the first book in the War Chronicles. It is the story of Jazz. Jazz is a random wear. So this means that she can turn into any warm-blooded being that she sees before her before she turns. Now this turned out to be trouble for her. She turns before she's meant to and she turns into a boy instead of an animal. In this story, Jess also finds her dead sister Celia's diaries and find out why it was that she died and that there are so much more to her kind than she actually thought she knew. Not really my cup of tea. I don't know it was, if it was just too teen angsty maybe. But one thing I will say about this that I thought was really amazing was that there were no 
um, no love interest in this. There was just friendship and family and the um, were fantasy elements that were in it as well. So that made it really enjoyable that for once it is a YA novel that doesn't focus a around a love interest. I thought that was super. We need more of that. But yeah, enjoyable, but still didn't really catch me. I don't think I'm going to continue on with this. But if werewolves and war kind and shapeshifters is really your thing, I would definitely say give it a go and see what you think. I ended up giving it three stars. So there you have it. Those are the books that... <laughs> um, thanks. <laughs> I can't hold a stack of books and a cute dog at the same time. No, I can't do it. So yeah, I was trying to hold up my stack of books, but Mark didn't want me to. So, so here it is. <laughs> Here's the stack of the books that I read in the month of July. If you have read any of the books that I've shown in this wrap up, or you have any thoughts on any of them, or questions for that matter, leave them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to answer them. Don't forget to... <laughs> Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you in my next video soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>